Hello friends, this video on data handling part 2 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. How can we organize this data? So this was the data like the number, the scores of students in a class. This represents data. But looking at this data, it might be difficult for you to analyze it because it is a huge set of data. Now, here I have taken a small set of data as an example, but normally in the real life scenario, this data will always be a huge set of data, some 50, 60 students in a class, or it could even be some 100, 200 students. So that time it would be difficult to analyze so many numbers. So what should the teacher do? So how should the teacher better handle this data? Because it is difficult for the teacher to handle this data. So let us look at some better ways of organizing this data. So one way could be the teacher prepares a table where he writes the names of all the students in the class and their respective scores. So when he does this, then what happens? Now you see, when you look at this table, so looking at the table, you can very quickly say, so now since the numbers are written in a more organized way, so it is easier to compare the numbers also. So by quickly looking at the numbers, you see that 80 is the maximum. That means who scored the maximum marks? Tina scored maximum. And who scored minimum? So looking at this, you see that 42 is the minimum score. And who scored minimum? Rana scored minimum. Okay. Now, th this is one way of organizing the data. So you have put it into a table. And the moment you have put it into a table, it becomes easier for you to compare the numbers. That's one way. What could be another way? Now, there could be another way that instead of writing names of all the students and their respective marks, what you do is you write, you make two columns. In one column, you say that all those who scored less than 50, all those who scored 50 to 70, and all those who scored more than 70. And then you just write how many students scored less than 50, how many scored between 50 and 70, and how many scored greater than 70. So here you see how many scored greater than 70. So looking at this table, you can see that Akash, Tina, Kanchan, these three people, they scored more than 70. So three people scored more than 70. Between 50 to 70 were 4 and less than 50 were 2. Now how would this table help you? Now this table is the easier, easiest of the two options because looking at this table, you get a very fair idea about the performance of the whole class. Why? Because looking at this table, even though you do not get to know the name of the student who scored the highest or, or who scored the lowest, but you get an idea about the average performance of the class. Because by looking at this, you get to know that there are only two students out of nine students who scored less than 50. The rest, all of them performed either average or above average. So you get that idea looking at this small table. So that ways this table is beneficial. At the same time, let's say that you plan to give some special classes to the students who are poor in the mathematics. So those who scored less than 50. So how many scored two? That means those two students can be given some special class in mathematics. So you know, when, when you organize the data in this fashion, it became helpful in some, certain ways. So it depends on what you need. If you need the names of the students, then definitely you should go for option one, where in the table itself you have names of all the students and their marks. But if you are looking at um, some information as as a class, like you want to take some decisions, whether you should arrange special class or not. So that decision will depend on how many students are poor in their scores. So that information you can get from this table itself. So this is another way of organizing data. So I hope that this helped you to understand that why do we need to organize data and how can we organize data. So these are different ways of organizing data. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes, and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics, and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.